This week in H10 EMA, we've been looking at magnetism. We've been looking at different types of magnetism in materials. The most common magnets you'll be aware of are your standard ferromagnets. These make up fridge magnets and most other things you can think of when you think of a magnet. We've looked in a bit more detail about how this works, and in this video I'm going to go through in quite a lot more detail how the hysteresis loop of a magnetic material is obtained. Last week we also looked at how the Earth has its own magnetic field and how it's not as simple as a straightforward bar magnet. We also looked at the idea of if you have a current carrying wire, it will generate a magnetic field in concentric circles around it. If we take our piece of wire and twist it into a loop, we find that magnetic field lines will concentrate into the centre of the loop. We can extend this idea to the concept of solenoids and electromagnets. This is where we have a coil of wire, pass a current through it, and produce the magnetic field in the centre of the coil. If we introduce a magnetic material such as iron as a core material, we can boost this magnetic material by a multiplying factor of mu r, where mu r is the relative permeability of the material. Magnetic permeability is the parallel to electric permittivity. We'll talk about this a bit more in lectures, but these two values are linked, but both very different. These are universal constants, so anywhere in the universe, these are true. Remember, there's a ROGO homework this week, and this is the fourth ROGO homework out of five for the module. We're getting towards the end of the course. We've covered about three quarters of the material now, so hopefully you've enjoyed it and keep up the hard work. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the hysteresis loop of a ferromagnetic material. I covered this in the lecture, and this is me going through it in a bit more detail. So our starting point for any material that is ferromagnetic that we're going to magnetise is this point here right at the origin. This is the movement loop for any material which is magnetic, such as iron being the key example. And what I've got at various points around the screen are these domains which are shown. So you can imagine these as being the material split into lots of tiny little magnets and we're going to see what happens to those as we move around the loop. We should also add our graph uh, direction axes. So we've got the applied magnetic field H here, so I'm going to add an arrow there. Um, what this is is uh, that's the external magnetic field that we're going to apply to the material. So we're going to take it all the way to the right initially and then backwards all the way to the left. So it has a direction as well as a magnitude. The other axis is the magnetization of the material and I'm going to add my axis there as well. So this is going to look at how magnetizes the material on its own and this is where H and M and B can all get confused because we're looking at what happens to a magnetic magnetic material within a magnetic field. So let's start at the origin. So to begin with, we have, um, I'm going to use this uh, block to fill it in. So we're going to look at what's happening here. Well, initially, the material is unmagnetized. So that means that all of the domains inside it are pointing all over the place. And what happens is that their net direction is neutral. So there's no magnetic field. So that's me just sketching it there. It doesn't matter if your diagram isn't precisely the same as mine, but you get the overall point, uh, view. So I'm going to write not magnetic here just as a reminder. So, um, and that makes sense because we're looking at the magnetization of the material on the y-axis. And at that point, that is the zero axis. So it makes sense that the magnetization of the material is zero. Therefore, surprise, surprise, it isn't magnetized. What we're then going to do is we're going to apply our magnetic field. So as we increase the applied field, the material begins to become magnetized and it travels up this loop. What that means is that as the applied field gets stronger, it starts to pull all of those little magnetic domains within the material into alignment. So they're all going to be spun into the direction of the applied field when we get to the final point. That's this point up here. So this is the point where it becomes flat and this is known as the magnetic saturation point. 
So what the saturation point means is that even if you keep applying a stronger and stronger applied magnetic field, it doesn't make any difference to the material because all of those miniature domains inside are already lined up with the direction of the applied field. And that's what I'm just drawing in here in my little domain diagram. So everything is pointing in the same direction as that applied field, and that corresponds to this part here. You can also read the magnetic saturation point off of this graph, which is called capital M subscript S, and that is the value of the magnetization of the material when it's at its maximum. So far, so good. What we're going to do now is we're going to take that applied magnetic field and we're going to reduce the strength of it. And as we reduce the strength of it, we travel backwards along the x-axis until we get to zero. So we're not actually applying any magnetic field. But then what we're going to do is we're going to start applying that magnetic field in the other direction. And what happens is all of these domains are now going to start to be pulled in the other direction. So they're going to start to reorientate themselves from facing right to facing left. And as we go down this curve, there are more and more of them are getting pulled towards the left. And then when we get to this point here, this is an interesting point because we can see once again we've crossed over the zero point for the magnetization of the material. What this means is that at this point, I'm going to draw a line here, I should have done them the other way around, but never mind, doesn't matter. Um, we've reached the situation where once again the domains are randomly oriented. So some of them will still be facing to the right, some of them will be facing to the left, and some of them will be at any point in between. The overall effect is that material is once again not magnetic. So that's the next point where the material becomes not magnetic. As we continue to move down, that applied magnetic field is getting larger and going uh, more to the left. And when we get down to here, we've reached what's called the magnetic saturation point, but this time it's in the other direction. So what this means is that all those tiny little magnets within the material have once again aligned themselves to the direction of the magnetic field, but this time it's pointing to the left rather than to the right. So this would match up with this point about here. Um, so what we can do is we can also draw another point which is called the magnetic saturation point once more. You might see this called minus ms but it's the same magnitude, it's just a different direction. This is another saturation point and it doesn't matter if we keep applying that external field to the left and getting it bigger and bigger and bigger, there are no more magnetic domains that can be aligned. So it's already saturated. So I'm going to call that saturated. Saturated. And this one that we looked at to begin with is also saturated. So we'll add that label there as well. So what we're going to do is we've reached this point over here. We're now going to reduce the strength of that applied magnetic field and go along until we get to zero applied magnetic field and then we're going to start applying it towards the right again and the material feels all of those little domains are feeling the tug of that applied field is starting to spin them around from the right to the left and we continue going on and on until we get to this next point of interest where once again we've crossed the zero point for the magnetization of the material. What does the zero point of the magnetization of the material mean? It means it's not magnetized again. So we've got those domains all over the place. So they're being pulled from the left to face to the right. And some of them are in between. Some of them have got there. Some of them have not. But we end up with this random orientation of domains within the material, which means once again, it is not magnetic. So when we've reached this point, what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving that applied magnetic field to the right and it keeps pulling those domains around to orientate themselves towards the right and then we get back up to saturation point. It's, you can continue going around this loop. What happens then if you reach maximum and then you reverse the field, you go around this loop again. And that's what these arrows, these blue arrows on the diagram show is the travel around the hysteresis loop. Once you've applied, once you've magnetized your material, you can't go back to this zero point. That was the initial point, and that's how it works. The other point that I'll point out in this diagram, so we've got the magnetic saturation points. We also have the point where we cross the applied magnetic field line 
this point here is called the coercivity or H subscript C and that's this point here and also this point here which was sometimes called minus HC and what that means is it tells you how much of the applied magnetic field it will take to make the overall magnetism back to zero so when you've applied a field what how much of a field do you then have to apply to unmagnetize the material effectively the other key point i'll point out with this diagram so the area of this loop here is important materials which are known as magnetically hard materials have a wide hysteresis loop this means that it takes a lot of energy to magnetize the material and then to remove that magnetization from it this makes them really good for things like magnetic recording media and of course permanent magnets because it's difficult to realign those domains and to change the magnetic properties materials which are magnetically soft will have a much narrower hysteresis loop so let's see how accurately I can draw this here so I'm going to try and redraw you they've got the same shape but it's just a lot narrower this is not symmetrical this was a bad idea okay so hopefully you can see it's meant to be the same overall shape and it should ideally be symmetrical about the axis but it's got a much narrower area what this means is that this material will change in response to mag an external magnetic field rapidly however it will also then not take much energy to reverse that change so these types of materials are used in things like transformer cores where we're not very interested in causing a magnetic effect but we're going to use the internal magnetism of the materials to create transformers to move electricity without wires from one side of the device to the other so that is magnetic hysteresis it is ferromagnetic materials that dis that display these properties it's the strongest type of magnetism that we know of and it's incredibly useful in all sorts of electrical applications